You're not supposed to move when someone is painting your picture. Oh, but Olivia, my nose itches. Ian, how am I ever going to finish this and give it to a museum? Hmm. I call this painting Boy with a Blue Sailboat. If you look carefully, you can see that his nose is very, very itchy. better. <sighs> Fine, I'll paint something else. I think I'm allergic to boats. Shh, look. Poor little ducks. I wish we could help them get to their mom. <gasps> I know. Come on, ducklings. You can do it. You're almost there. Just a bit further. Come on, ducklings. Yay! You did it! Olivia, Ian, time to go home. We have to go now. Goodbye, ducks. Bye. And then the mother duck said to me, thank you, Olivia, for helping my babies climb up the bank. I mean, she would say that to me if ducks could talk. After all, three baby ducks are quite a lot to handle. <laughs> You think so? I help too. Yes, I was just about to say that. But I was the first one to see them because I'm older and notice things more. I'm putting William down for his nap. Can you two play quietly for a while? Sure, Mom. to go finish my painting. Only this time, I'm going to paint something that doesn't move. Perfect. Beautiful flowers. What if the museum already has a painting of flowers? Rule of Life number 147. Most of the time, little brothers ask silly questions, but sometimes they ask really good ones. bowling trophy. I bet the museum doesn't have a painting of that. Very funny, Ian. I'm trying to paint. Stop that, Ian. Stop what? That? That's just their mom. Kids, what's going on down there? I asked you to be quiet. <gasps> I guess they really, really like me. Can't we keep them, Mom? No, honey. They're wild animals. You think they want peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter and banana? Banana? Everybody knows ducks eat spaghetti. Yeah, I don't want you feeding them anything. They'll eat when we get them back to the pond in the morning. Now, why don't you bring them down to the garage and make them a bed down there? The garage? But they might get bored in the garage. Can't they stay in my room? They won't get bored here. All right. But please make sure they don't get out. We need to keep them nice and safe. Okay, Mom. Who wants to play hide and seek? I do. Just don't look behind the piano. Okay, I count to a hundred and you guys hide. But you have to hide in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now 
98, 99, 100. Ready or not, here I come. I wonder where those ducklings could be hiding. I really do wonder. I've looked everywhere to find a bagpipe player for your party. How would you feel about a mariachi band? W what was that? I didn't hear you. Here, ducklings. Mariachi band it is. Sorry, I thought I saw a paper clip. Sweetie, I'm on a business call. Please go play somewhere else. Hey, sweetie, care to enjoy some popcorn with your pop? <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Um. Shoo, go away, Doc. Butter or no butter? Mm, you're right, it's perfectly good plain. Or maybe with just a little salt. Here you go. No thanks, Dad. But... but... Psst! Baby Duck, are you in here? No, but I am. I win! Ian, forget hide-and-seek. I lost the baby ducks. I only found two of them. <coughs> Shh! Where do you think their brother went? How do you know it's a boy duck? Because a girl wouldn't act this silly. That's why. Hmm. Well, if I were a duck, I know where I'd go. Ian, you're brilliant. Just because I don't like bass doesn't mean ducks don't. Don't worry. You'll be back in your pond soon. But first, I think you need a little swim. Hey guys, want to play with my rubber ducky? Hey, I didn't say you could eat it. Oh, thank you. See you then. Yes, I do think it's going to be a party to remember. Uh, something strange is going on with our children. Olivia didn't want any of my popcorn, and I just walked by the bathroom, and I could hear Ian in there running a bath without being told. Hmm, that is strange. Oh, before I forget, today at the pond we were... Darling, not to make things even stranger, but there appears to be a duck in our house. Olivia! I know I should have told you I lost the baby ducks, but I thought I could find them again by myself. But she couldn't, so I helped. Wait, no. Does this mean I'm in trouble too? No one's in trouble. But next time, just tell me that the ducklings are missing, Olivia. Not that there will be a next time. Sorry, Mom. I will. No, it's just that they're wild animals. <laughs> that wasn't me. Well, since we're here, ducks and all, well, how about we watch a movie? Yay! Can we have popcorn? Sure. I left the bowl right over there on the couch. Huh? <laughs> 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 It's a wonderful picture, Olivia. Very realistic. Thank you. They are cute. Then can we keep them? <laughs> no. Good night, Olivia. Good night, Mom. Who wants to hear a story? Okay. Good night. children is the sweet smell of spring. The perfect time for all of you to get in touch with nature and plant your very own garden. 
Each of these little pockets is filled with seeds for you to take home and plant. Yes, Harold? What if you're allergic to parsley? Oh, well, that would be a shame. It's such a marvelous garnish. Yes, Francine? Do we have to put our hands in dirt? Well, yes. That's part of getting in touch with nature. Shoo, you pest! Mrs. Hogenmuller! Mrs. Hogenmuller! Yes, Olivia? I'd like to grow a gigantic rose garden full of red roses. Oh, unfortunately, that would take a very long time. How long? Too long. However, you do have time to grow alfalfa, basil, garbanzo beans, and many others. Come on up and help yourselves. are these? Leftover seeds from last year's garden project. I guess it'll be a surprise. But how will I know what I'm growing? You won't. That's what makes it a surprise. Oh, you, you fly. Okay, Perry. Ready and dig. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be the best surprise garden ever. It could grow into a rubber tree, or a giant yucca plant, or a wild jungle. I think I saw it growing. Olivia, it's only been a few minutes. I think it's gonna take a while. Rule of life number 88. A while can be a very, very, very long time when you're six and three quarters. That's my mom. I'll see you later. I gotta go plant my parsnips. Bye, Julian. Good luck. I'll call you as soon as my surprise plants start growing. Olivia, how fast do you think plants grow? <sighs> Faster than these. <laughs> be patient. It'll be worth the wait. You know, studies have shown that talking to plants can help them grow faster. I could do that. Hello, plants. Please grow faster. I have to bring you to show and tell. And if you don't grow enough, I won't know what you are. And if I don't know what you are, I can't really bring you to show and tell since I won't know what I'm showing. I know. So then the beanstalk grew and grew and grew. And this is how you ride a scooter, which is really fun. If I was a plant, I think I would be a blueberry bush. Since it doesn't have thorns and it makes delicious berries that birds like to eat. You won't be able to ride one yourself when you grow up, because you're a plant and won't be able to hold on with your branches or anything. Jack couldn't believe how his beanstalk sprouted up into the air, past the treetops, past the roof, high up into the clouds. Or maybe I'd be a tree that kids could climb and play on. Inspirational, isn't it? But I'll take you for rides all you want. But you have to grow. Please? <sighs> if plants like talking, I bet they love singing. Grow my surprise garden, grow. Cause soon it's gonna snow. Besides, I need you for show and tell. I guess I need to be even more patient. My garden! My garden! Julian, want to come over and see my surprise plants in my surprise garden? Yes. Harry! I'm very mad at you 
for digging up my seeds. Not forever mad, but mad for at least the next 10 minutes. Sorry about your garden, Olivia. That's okay. I've got more seeds. I'm just going to need to be even more patient. Look, what's this? Uh, I think that's a dog bone. Hmm, maybe, or maybe it's a dinosaur bone. What's that? I think I found a dinosaur bone. It looks a million years old, maybe two million. Cool, are there any more? I don't know, you guys. Come on, Julian. Maybe we could find a brontosaurus tailbone or something. And if you open your book... Mrs. Hoggenmuller? Mrs. Hoggenmuller? Yes, Olivia. I want to show the class an amazing discovery I made in my garden. Not now, Olivia. We'll have a show and tell about our gardens next week. But it's not about my garden, Mrs. Hoggenmuller. It's about what I found in my garden. A dinosaur bone. Hmm. Behold, I, Professor Olivia, have discovered the missing bone that dinosaurologists have been looking for for ages. And now, I will replace the missing bone. Say cheese. I'm sorry, Olivia, but I don't think that's a dinosaur bone. I'm not sure I agree with you, Mrs. Hoggenmuller. This is an old dog toy, and it's attracting flies. Some dog must have buried it in your garden. That would be Barry, my garden helper. But where did he get a dinosaur bone? Now, children, by now, your garden should be full of seedlings. Next week, remember to bring one little plant in and we'll grow our own garden in the classroom. Yeah! <sighs> My surprise garden! <gasps> My surprise plants! Great job, garden helper! Fantastic piece, Brown Francine. Isn't nature glorious? Well, almost all of nature. <gasps> what a lovely bean plant, Harold. I'm just glad it's not parsley. Look at Julian's parsnip. What do you have for us, Olivia? This is my surprise plant. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Hmm. <gasps> that, boys and girls, is called a Venus flytrap. I think I'll just call it a surprise plant, since that fly sure looks surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, you did a wonderful job with your garden. You were very patient. Thanks, Dad. I bet we won't have many flies around here. I bet we won't. Maybe by tomorrow my plants are going to grow into a whole jungle. Good night, Olivia. Good night, Dad. I have a very exciting announcement. It is almost time for the annual Hoggenmuller Games. What's that? I have no idea. The Hoggenmuller Games are a series of sporting contests. I began them to help encourage you all to exercise and be healthy and fit. Now, I will demonstrate each of the three events. First of all, there's the ball toss. Mm. I'll get it. Next, there's the long jump. Woo! 
And now, the 50-meter dash. Nothing like fresh air and exercise. You, too, can be great athletes. Okay, it's your turn. Hmm. Our next event is the 50-meter dash. On your mark, get set, go! Olivia wins the gold medal! Thank you. Olivia has two gold medals. Can she make it three? Three gold medals for Olivia! This is going to be great. I can't wait. I can. I can wait a really long time. All right, everyone. Let's get started. Choose the activity you want to compete in, and let's get practicing. Come on, Julian, it won't be so bad. All right, the long jump. <gasps> Very nice, Sam. Give it your all, Harold. All right! Laugh at gravity, Francine. Ha, ha, ha. Fantastic. Now let's see what you've got, Olivia. Woo. Great. Let's try that again. There. Let's see you beat that. I'll do my best. Clearly, this is your event, Olivia. Thank you, Mrs. Hagenmuller. Come on, Julian, let's start practicing for the Hagenmuller games. Step one, jumping jacks. Lots and lots of jumping jacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Are we done? We're just getting started. Step two, headbands. Rule of life number 65. For some reason, headbands make you feel faster. Step three, be ready for anything. A real runner needs to be ready for anything. Like rain and mud, even wind. You're doing great, Julian. Way to push through. Boys and girls, parents and friends, sisters. I am very proud to announce the start of the annual Hagenmuller Games. The winner of each event will receive, personally handed to them by me, a hoggy. And now, da 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 da, let the games begin. Our first event of the day is the ball toss. Good throw, Alexandra. <laughs> nice try, Harold. Let's see what you've got, Daisy. <laughs> Beautiful. Connor, give it your all. <laughs> 
First place in the ball toss goes to our very own Connor. Yay! Woo! Yeah! Hmm. I feel great. Everybody under the canopy. Oh no. I hope we don't have to cancel the games. Unthinkable. And now the 50 meter dash. But the track is all wet and muddy. The game shall go on. You're going to do great. I bet you're the only one who trained in mud. That's true. On your mark, get set, go! <laughs> Julian, go! <laughs> Julian, you did it! I couldn't have done it without my coach. And the Huggy for first place in the 50-meter dash goes to... Julian! Time for the final event. Everyone who is doing the long jump, please line up. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, take the field. ourselves a tie. <gasps> Olivia and Francine, you each get another jump to decide who will be the winner. <laughs> Here, Olivia, try this. Thanks, Julian. Don't mention it. I'm so proud of you. For winning today? I'm happy you won, but I'm even more proud of you for helping Julian. I'm proud of me, too. And I'm proud of Julian. Night, sweetie. And I'm proud of Mrs. Hogenmuller for thinking of the games. Go to sleep now. Want to hear some other things I'm proud of? <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Good night, Olivia. Good night, Mom. One, two, three, eyes on me. Very good. Now, I have some very exciting news. Today, we are going to prepare our presentation for next week's school concert. Yay! We will be saluting fantastic fruits and vibrant vegetables in a lovely song written by yours truly. Yes, Olivia? Are we all going to be a fruit or a vegetable? Yes. Each of you will choose what fruit or vegetable you would like to be. Can I be the broccoli? It's full of fiber. Yes, it is. And yes, you can, Francine. If she's going to be the broccoli, then I'll be... Is pudding a vegetable? No. Is it a fruit? No, it's a completely overrated dessert. Then I'll be a radish. Radish it is. I'm going to be a rutabaga. Nice appreciation of our root vegetables, Daisy. Now, Olivia, we don't yet have any fruits. How about a lemon? I love lemons. Okay. Julian, it's your turn. 
Uh... Celery. I'll be celery. Celery? Why not a pepper? Or a yam? Because nobody notices celery. It can just be in the back where no one will notice. Fine. So Julian is celery. Now that you've all picked your food, I will give you your costumes. I'm also giving you a copy of the two lines you'll be singing as your vegetable or fruit of choice. Uh, singing? I have to be a singing vegetable or fruit? Yes. Everyone will be singing. That's how we pay tribute to these marvelous gifts from Mother Nature. Even the celery has to sing? Even the celery. <laughs> I don't think I can sing in front of people. What do you mean? We sing all the time in class. Actually, I just move my mouth. I'm too embarrassed to sing. Try singing just in front of me. Do I have to? Go ahead. You'll see how easy it is. <clears throat> uh, look at me. I'm a celery. I can't sing in front of people. But it's just me. Then I guess I can't sing in front of a person either. But Julian, don't you want to be a famous rock star? Well, yeah. When you're a famous rock star, you'll have to perform in front of lots of people. You can do it. I have an idea. Close your eyes. What are you gonna do? Just trust me. Okay. <laughs> now, when you open your eyes, you're going to see an audience. An audience? Don't worry, they're friendly. They won't say a word or throw anything. Okay, open your eyes. Try singing to them. Then maybe you can work up to real people. Could you leave the room? Sure. I'll be right outside. <clears throat> Look at me, I'm celery, tall and green and crunchy. Rule of life number 114. Be nice to your toys and stuffed animals, because one day they may end up helping your best friend. Why is drooling and singing to your toys? Quiet, Ian. I'm trying to listen. Me too, but couldn't we hear better if we were in the room? You're right. I'm tall and green and so crunchy. Use me chopped up in soup or with dip on a scoop. Hey, world, I'm celery. <gasps> we couldn't hear you very well in the hall. You sounded really good. Really, really good. Pretend we're not here. But I can see you sitting there, right in front of me. Hey, I bet you could sing better if you wore your celery costume. I'll put on my lemon costume, too. Aww. I wish I had a costume. I'll be right back. Now that you're wearing your costume, you're no longer Julian, who's embarrassed to sing. You're a celery. But I don't feel like a celery. Look, I'm a banana. Julian. You need to be celery, not Julian. Walk like celery, talk like celery, sing like celery. Look at me, I'm celery. I'm tall and green and crunchy. Use me chop up in soup or in a dip. I'm a scoop. Hey, work, I'm celery. Okay, I'll try. Look at me. I'm a celery. You're doing great, Julian. He is? Shh. I'm tall and green and so crunchy. <sighs> How did practicing with Julian go? Not very well. Mom, I just wish Julian liked to sing in front of people. Well, honey, not everyone is as comfortable as you are performing in front of people. But I'm sure he'll do better with your help. 
He'd do better if no one came. Good evening, and welcome to our annual school concert entitled Fantastic Fruits and Vibrant Vegetables. <laughs> Mr. Celery? Psst, Julian, just imagine everyone is a stuffed animal. But stuffed animals don't cough or clap or videotape you. Maybe I should just sing from behind the curtain so I can't see anyone. Aha! Uh -huh. Dear Lemon and Celery for those, uh, unique performances. And thank you, all the fantastic fruits and vibrant vegetables. Can I sing a lemon song for you again? In the morning, dear. How about I sing new verses? Or I can sing a whole new lemon song so you won't have to listen to the same old one. Good night, Olivia. Or we can sing together. You can be a lemon too. I'll be a lemon tomorrow, I promise. Sweet dreams. Good night, Mom. Good night, Olivia. Mr. Mason, this will be the loveliest anniversary party you've ever seen. Edwin, come on. Don't you want to play? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Edwin, come on. Let's play. S sweetie, sorry. I, I can't hear. Then I'll go play with Perry. No, I, I promise no carnations. <laughs> hmm. Maybe I'll go play with Ian's goldfish. Hello, goldfish. How are you today? What do you want to do? Ian sure does have a messy room, doesn't he? Do you want some food? Well, I probably shouldn't feed you, even if you are hungry, because I don't know when Ian last fed you. Mom, can I go play at Julian's house? Sure, sweetie. What's wrong with Bernie, Julian? I don't know. I think he might be sick. He isn't eating. I keep giving him flies, and he just sits there. Maybe we should take him to the vet. I'll ask my mom to drive us. 
I'm here with my lizard, Bernie. He won't eat. Oh, dear. Well, have a seat, and the vet will see Bernie as soon as she can. I wish I could have a ferret. Or a parrot. That would be cool. My mom says that three kids and a dog and a cat and a goldfish are enough. If I had my own house, I'd have animals everywhere. What do you feed him? Flies. Hmm. Well, I think I know what's wrong. I'll be right back. Don't worry, Bernie. He's a very good doctor. Lizards love to eat flies, but I think Bernie might be bored eating them all the time. Like, if we had ice cream every day, we wouldn't want it anymore. We wouldn't? Something like that. Let's try a cricket. He looks better already. Guess what, Mom? I'm going to be a vet. That's wonderful, Olivia. Just need to find my vet bag and my stethoscope. I'm definitely going to be a vet when I grow up. I'm going to be Dad. You can't be Dad. Dad is already Dad. Oh, yeah. What are you going to be, Julian? I just try to get through a day at a time, Ian. I'm going to start right now. How do you feel, Perry? Hmm. Cold nose. That's a good sign. Now let me feel your tummy. <gasps> Perry, you aren't done with your checkup. We'll definitely have vegetarian choices, Mr. Mason. Maybe pasta? <laughs> My, you are very hungry today, William. Oh, no, no, not you, Mr. Mason. Have you seen Perry? No, but Edwin is asleep right under the table. Well, I guess I'll examine Edwin and finish Perry's exam later. I'm going to take William in the yard for a little fresh air. Now, let's see. How can I fix you if nothing is wrong? Rule of life number 31. Most people think animals don't talk, but they do. They just talk very quietly. Maybe you have a pretend disease. I know. You must have furry footitis. You'll need an ice bath and lots of special care for that. Here's the problem. It was your sweet tooth. You'll feel better. See? All better. Hmm. Yes, it looks very sore. I have something to fix you up. Honey! I feel better. Olivia's the greatest vet ever. Here's your ice pack, Edwin. Mm -hmm. 
You smell like strawberry jam. You must have strawberry jam disease. Oh. Harry, come back for your checkup. Huh? Huh? Hey, Olivia, Bernie's still eating. Want to feed him? Not right now, Julian. I have to check on Edwin and find Perry. Okay, you're all cured. I'm coming, Julian. Bye, Mom. <sighs> oh, Edwin, you naughty kitty. You had an accident. Hi, everybody. I'm home. In the kitchen, darling. Hello, Perry. <sighs> huh? Olivia, Ian? What happened here? Ask her. She's the vet. Perry broke out in strawberry jam disease, and it got on the couch. Right, okay, you two get Perry clean. I'll try to get these spots off the couch before your mom sees them. <laughs> You're supposed to be helping. <laughs> I am, I'm distracting him. Bernie's so full, he's napping. The couch is okay. Is Perry clean yet? Not quite, but I have an idea. <laughs> Edwin, I'm surprised at you. What did Edwin do? He had an accident. Was it a little puddle under the table in the kitchen? Uh-huh. I bet it was just water from the ice pack. Olivia? But he's all fine now, and Perry's strawberry jam disease is gone, and Bernie ate all the crickets. Strawberry jam disease? I have to go now and check on the um, tiger with some missing stripes. Olivia, one more question. If Edwin isn't having accidents, why was the couch wet? Oh, you'll have to ask Dad about that. Well, I'm glad Bernie is okay. Me too. He's a very special lizard. And you're a very special... Vet? Girl. Night, Olivia. Okay, class, today we're going to learn about the solar system. Oh my, the eight planets in our solar system are the coolest. How cool? Try Jupiter, but bring mittens. It's over 100 degrees below zero. Ooh. Need to warm up? Try Mercury. Phew, this planet is over 800 degrees hot. Yow! If the Earth was the size of a grape, the Jupiter would be as big as a grapefruit. Neptune is the last planet in our solar system, but outer space is filled with planets no one has discovered. Yet. Hmm. Olivia to ground control. I'm just passing the planet Neptune. Hi. And now, on to discover new planets. All right, children. I have a little project for you to do at home. Please draw, write about, or create a model of one of the planets in our solar system. Like these, for example, from last year's class. Yes, Olivia? Any planet? Any planet. Which one's the biggest? I'll bet you can look that up. Can we make stars, too? Yes. Stars aren't planets. No, but they'll make great decorations. Just choose a planet, Olivia. Now remember, space is very big, and there's a lot that hasn't been discovered yet. I'm 
making a picture of Venus. It's the brightest planet in the sky. I'm going to do Neptune. Did you know it has 13 moons? I'm doing Mars. Or maybe Mercury. No, Mars. Or Jupiter. <laughs> what planet to pick. They're all so fantastic. Wow. On Saturn, the winds blow over a thousand miles an hour. Really? Uh, uh, uh. Too windy! <laughs> hmm. Sounds really windy. Maybe I should do our planet, Earth. Must do planet Jupiter, where one peanut weighs one zillion trillion pounds. like a lot of work. Saturn is so beautiful with all of those rings. But Mars is red. Great color choice. And Neptune is so big. I just can't choose one. I know. I'm going to make all of the planets. Can I help? Mm-hmm. I'm going to start by making Saturn's rings. You can hold the tinfoil. Saturn's rings aren't made of tin foil. They're made of ice and dirt. I'll go get some. Ian, come back. The ice will melt. What about the dirt? No dirt. Just hold the tin foil. It looks really real, Olivia. Naturally. And now we make the red planet. Jupiter! Jupiter is not red. Well, it has a red spot on it. Red spots on a planet? Not spots, spot. One big red spot. See? Wow, that's so cool. Told ya. That's one big planet. Thanks, Dad. Big is good. Dad, will you blow this up? We need it to make Neptune. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please make it a little bigger this time? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bigger, please. Okay, just a second. A bit bigger. <laughs> like this? How's it going? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's all eight planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Wow, so we're done? Almost. But I think there's something missing. What's missing? I wish I knew. I wish I knew. Me too. Ground control, I am continuing my exploration of deep space, the final frontier, where no one but Olivia dares to go. Search on, Olivia. Bravely search on. <gasps> Ground control, Ground control, are you still there? What's happening? What is it? I found it, I found it. I just discovered a brand new planet. It looks just like I thought it would. We're going in. Hereby name you Planet Olivia. Now 
we're done. Let's get it downstairs. Let's try it this way. Nope. How about like this? Nope. Uh-oh. Rule of life number 68. If you build a really big solar system, make sure you have a really big bedroom door. Now what do we do? Hmm. Oh, hi, Mom. Can I have the whole class over to my room tomorrow? Olivia? Step right up, one and all, and see the amazing solar system in Olivia's room. Ladies and gentlemen of Hampshire Elementary, I'd like to share with you the result of explorations that have taken me far, far away. How far? Really far. Really, really far. Oh. Come with me on a little tour of our solar system. Ooh. Wow. Outstanding. There's Venus, the brightest planet. And Neptune, where one year lasts 165 Earth years. Wow. And here is our newest planet, Planet Olivia. Ooh. Planet Olivia? It's new, brand new. Oh, who discovered it? Me. I did. With some help from Spaceman Ian. Are you absolutely sure? Like you said, Mrs. Hogg and Muller, space is very big and there's a lot that hasn't been discovered yet. Oh, well then. Congratulations, Olivia. Yay! Yay! Night, Captain Olivia. Night, Spaceman Ian. Good crew you have there, huh? You are an excellent deep space explorer. Not everyone discovers a planet before they're seven. When was your first planet? Well, I'll let you know when it happens. Uh, maybe I'll discover Planet Dad for you. <laughs> I'd love that. Night-night, Livy. Night-night, Dad. Well, good morning, William. Did you have a nice sleep? <laughs> we want to be quiet so we don't wake up the others. <gasps> I'm ready for the beach. I love the beach, don't you, Dad? You can swim and snorkel and fly kites and collect seashells. I'd like to catch up on my reading. And boogie board and teach your favorite toy how to dog paddle and make sand pies. I'm going to build a sand city with skyscrapers and everything. Cool. I can't wait to relax in the sun today. Let's blow it up when we get there, shall we, Olivia? But... We need some room for the family. And don't forget, Julian's coming along, too. Julian doesn't take up very much room. Usually. Well, uh, hello, Julian. Looks like you're all set for a fun, safe day at the beach, I think. Yeah, I just hope I don't get sunburned and end up with salt water up my nose like last time. Let's see. What great things should we do today? We should definitely make sand angels first. This is great. No, I won't even have to touch the sand. But you can't make sand angels if you don't touch the sand. But it gets in my bathing suit and makes me itch and... <laughs> <laughs> uh, every time I come here, it's a complete disaster. You've almost got it. Now move your arms and legs. Do you think I can swim without getting wet? 
Now, just hang on to your board and do what I do. Okay. But don't do anything too radical. Who, me? This isn't so bad after all. Whoa! Look out, Julian! Ow. Sorry, Ian. I think I got even more sand in my pants. Don't worry. There's plenty of fun stuff to do out of the water. We can rebuild Ian's sand city with giant buildings, heliports, and a subway system for the sand crabs. Well, I'm already covered in sand, so why not? Hey, what's this? Could be an oyster. <gasps> a real oyster? Do you have any idea what oysters are? Invertebrates? Yeah, but that's not all. They're also pearl makers. They're what? Pearl makers. Oysters make pearls, and pearls make beautiful necklaces. Isn't this exciting? Nope. Finding an oyster is like finding buried treasure. And if there's one oyster on the beach, there's got to be more. Come on, let's start digging. Sounds like a lot of work. Aren't we supposed to be having fun today? What could be more fun than digging for buried treasure? <sighs> shoo! Shoo, birds, that's our lunch. <sighs> <sighs> There's nothing else here. I think we're digging in the wrong place. How about... over there? On that island? Come on, mateys! It's just like a pirate adventure! Arr! Aye, aye, aye! aye. Shiver me timbers. There be a treasure map. Mark. Polly wants a pearl maker. Mark. It's fun to be pirates and sail on the sea. We wear funny hats and we do what we please. We don't worry about bedtime or eating our bees. The life of a pirate's the life for me. Yo ho, it's treasure we're after. Yo ho. Oysters we prize! Yo-ho, we'll dig till we find them. Can't wait to find the pearls inside! It's fun to be pirates, we get to tell tales. Of searching for treasure, get swallowed by whales. But our boat springs a leak, all a scallywag's tail. Treasure map, get ahead, ladies! Yo-ho, it's treasure we're after. Yo-ho, it's oysters we prize. To find the pearls inside. Polly wants a pearl maker. Well? Well, what? Aren't you gonna go in and get it? Why don't you do it? I'm the captain, and the captain stays with the ship. But. What? She's the captain. Lead us to the treasure. Land ho! Full speed ahead! Whoa! Let's start digging. <laughs> Didn't I tell you we were gonna have fun today? Yep, you did. I'm hungry. I don't want to dig anymore. I'm going to go get a sandwich. Oysters! I found one! 
one too. Number 19. Sometimes you just have to use your big voice. We did it! <laughs> <laughs> nice jam, Dad. <laughs> Should we go back for a treasure? Treasure? Oysters! With pearls inside! Hmm. Sorry, Olivia, that's actually not an oyster, it's a clam. There are no pearls inside. <sighs> But they're perfect for a clam bake. Who wants seconds? Shoot! <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, all of these books are about pirate adventures. How about one pirate story followed by a nice, gentle story like Goodnight Beach? Um, how about two pirate stories and Goodnight Beach? <sighs> I guess that would be okay. Of course. Three pirate stories would be... I don't think so. Two's fine. Good night, Olivia. Sleep tight. Aye, aye, matey. Julian, I'm hiding. Find me. Julian, you're supposed to try and find me, remember? Hide and seek? Actually, I like to play set and watch. And my cat Gwendolyn can jump through two hoops forward and backwards. And she stands on her tippy toes. My cat, Edwin, can dance ballet. Gwendolyn can also swim the backstroke. Well, Edwin can sing opera. I just remembered. Gwendolyn can make yummy macaroni and cheese. My cat, Edwin, used to make plain macaroni and cheese. Now, he makes three cheese macaroni and bakes cupcakes. You know what might be very fun? A show and tell day for you and your pets. Ooh. Why, I'll even bring in a couple of my furry friends. Because they're so pretty. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. They're mama's little babies. <clears throat> well, as I was saying, Yes, Olivia? I have an even better idea, Mrs. Hoggenmuller. Can we have a talent show for our pets? They can all do a trick, and whoever is the best will win a prize. A pet talent yeah. show? My, oh, my, how I do I it. keep coming up with such fantastic ideas? Yeah. Fun idea, Olivia. Yeah. Gwendolyn loves a good challenge. Edwin doing tricks? I think Edwin could surprise us. Ian, Julian, ready? Okay, Edwin. Energy! Jump! You can't get him to jump if he won't move. I'll get him to move. Here we go. Come on, Edwin. All you have to do is move two inches for your very favorite food. Sardines. Maybe one inch? <laughs> Is there a problem, sweetie? It's Edwin. I really need to teach him some tricks, but he won't listen to me at all. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Edwin. Plus, cats only do what they want to do, Olivia. Good girl. Now walk your hind legs. Now walk backwards. And a flip. Wow, Gwendolyn. That was perfect. Okay, pet 
lovers, let the fun begin. Daisy, why don't you go first? This is Trevor, my hamster. He smiles. Harold? Behold my talking parrot. Hi. There. Hi. There. Hi. Sam? This is Sally. Sally! Sally! Go back, Sally! Sam will take care of Sally. Julian, you're next. This is Bernie, my lizard. He, uh, sticks his tongue out a lot. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. He also catches flies. Where would we be without lizards? Olivia, your turn. Edwin, the famous circus cat, will now perform some amazing tricks. commands. Edwin, you will snore really loud. <laughs> <laughs> he did very well. And now it's time to see the last pet. Francine and Gwendolyn? Meet Gwendolyn. She's very talented. Whoa! <laughs> Great job, kids. No question about the winner. It's Gwendolyn. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Mrs. H, did someone come in second? Well, yes. There is a tie for second place. It's between everyone. Yeah! Well, that was great. Well, it sounds like a very fun pet show and tell. I still can't believe Francine won the first prize, and I didn't. I agree. You should have won. And your lizard was really good, too. Thanks. And Bernie thanks you, too. Make sure to feed Edwin now, honey. Okay, Mom. Come here, Edwin. Edwin? 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 Edwin! Edwin's not outside. I don't know where he is. You can't tell anyone. We have to find him. Edwin moved? He never moves. Something must be really important to him for him to move. Rule of life number 24. If you have a pet that never, ever, ever moves, watch out, because one day he will. It's okay. We just have to look in all his usual places. What's lost? Nothing. A toy? A book? An Edwin? Shh. Edwin's nowhere. I guess we'll look in the not usual Edwin places. Follow me. <sighs> My, you all look sad. What's wrong? Well, I can't find Edwin anywhere. And we looked everywhere. Well, you know, cats can be tricky. But Edwin isn't tricky. He can't do one trick. Well, someone must have seen him. Do you know this cat? Here's some thinking music for you. So, fluff face. It is Gwendolyn. Maybe using this will help. Take another look, Gwendolyn. Yes, he looks sort of familiar. 
Good. Now, when did you last see this cat? My cat is innocent. No one said she wasn't. I'm just asking a few questions here. Now, think. Where were you on the day of... of today? I did not see Edwin after we walked home from school. Ah, so you know Edwin's name. Yes, I do. But that is all I know. What you're talking about. He's here. I know he is. Edwin, it's time to come home. <gasps> Edwin! You're doing tricks. He must have snuck in. I've been busy teaching Herman, my new dog, some tricks. Aw, they really like each other. We'll give them a kitty play date. After I'm through playing with my amazing cat. See you, Francine. <laughs> I think maybe after I'm an explorer, a doctor, a conductor, an artist, and a pilot, I'll be a detective. Or a cat trainer. Sounds like a very busy life. Yep. And you know what would really help me? Another cat. Don't say no yet. Just one more cat. Good night, Olivia. We have a perfectly wonderful cat and a very full house. No more pets for now. Slip. Yes, and it's in your backpack with your lunch. But are you absolutely positively sure? Oh, Olivia, you asked Mom a thousand times already. It's all right, Ian. Olivia's just excited about her field trip to the aquarium. What's so exciting about seeing a fish tank? We can see that at home. It's not just a fish tank. The aquarium has all kinds of fish tanks. Giant ones filled with every creature from under the sea. Every creature? Yep. And best of all, they have sea lions. Sea lions. Hey, Olivia, will you wrestle a really big shark and bring back one of its teeth for me? Sure. Bye. Honey, I don't think she'll get that close to a shark. Mom, you never know with Olivia. <laughs> Class, attention please. As you can see, I will be taking my trusty cowbell on our field trip in case I need to restore order at the aquarium. <laughs> Just like that. Now, I'm wearing this colorful and stylish visor so you can spot me if you get lost. <laughs> But, Mrs. Hagenmaler, I don't want to get lost. And you won't, Alexandra, because we will be using the buddy system. You will each have a buddy for the entire day. And when I say, buddy check, you are to hold hands with your buddy and raise them in the air. Any questions? Olivia? Can I be buddies with Julian? No, you are paired with Francine. Julian, you and Harold are buddies. So Sweet! Oh, Julian you brings the best Sam. lunch. Con come here, Connor. Over here with Connor. You come together. Otto, Oscar. Come on, get together, boys. Get together. Daisy, uh, you and Alexander will pair up. Come on, buddy. Good. Let's Thank practice you. walking before the bus comes. But Francine, I already know how to walk. I mean walk in step. Like buddies. It'll be 
fun. Now, do you want to walk on the left or the right? Rule of life number 12. Sometimes other people's idea of fun is very different from your own. The bus is here. Gotta go. Welcome to the aquarium, children. I'm Mr. Busby, the aquarium director, and these are your aquarium passports. As you view each exhibit, you will get a sticker, which you will affix to the image on your card. How very organized. And once your passport is full of stickers, you will go outside to the sea lion stage. <laughs> Class, the first buddies to collect all their stickers will have a little surprise later. Does it have something to do with the sea lion show? Yes, Olivia. And that's all I'll say about the surprise. Now, children, you may view the exhibits in any order you like to get your stickers. However, you must stay with your buddy. And there will be no running. Francine, hurry! I want to win the surprise! I think we should view the exhibits in this order. Smallest fish to biggest. And save the scary shark for last. Fine, whatever. Let's just go. But we should plan this carefully. Come on, they already got a sticker. Olivia, we agreed. Our first tank. Guppies. Olivia, are these guppies or groupers? Huh? Oh, those are groupers. You can tell by their lips. Wow, I didn't know you knew so much about fish. Look, clownfish. Olivia, wait, that's not the next fish on the list. So, we need a clownfish sticker. Yes, but not before we get the angelfish sticker. Ooh, seahorses! Olivia! Body check! Here! Good job, class. Carry on with your stickers. Is it time for lunch yet? Mm, not quite, Harold. You have ten more minutes to finish collecting your stickers. <laughs> Petting pool? Sure. It's through that door. We were just there. Look out for the blue crab. He's in a bad mood today. That's the last sticker we need. We could be the winners. Unless you two already finished. Nope. Julian said we should stop for lunch. If the surprise has anything to do with sea lions, we don't want to win. Fish breath is kind of gross. Come on, Francine. One more sticker and we'll win the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mrs. Hagenmuller, we got all the stickers, even that electric eels. This is amazing! How did you do it so fast? Well, some people are just better at the buddy system. You're the winners of the surprise! All right, who wants to feed the sea lions first? I do! <laughs> well, there are two sea lions and there are two of you. Ew! If you don't mind, Olivia, I think I'll just watch from over there. You don't want to feed the sea lions?
Olivia. Olivia. Olivia, it's time to feed the sea lions. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> And then I taught the sea lion to walk sideways and stand on its fins. And I even got it to eat Harold Hockenberry's tuna fish sandwich that nobody wanted. Well, I can see that you are quite the animal trainer. I am, aren't I? I guess I speak sea lion. How about speaking good night? Good night, Mom. I love you and sea lions. I love you and sea lions, too. Good night, Olivia. <laughs>